we moved over here three years ago to um, James and Jean Potter have uh, bought Leighton Model Farm. We've managed to move the farm, develop the stallions and develop the farm with the help of James and Jean and obviously and lots of other people. And Ruff, Barry Stud in Ireland have been a tremendous help to us and that's a continual help um, with stallions and, and working together. And it's great to have that relationship um, with other stud farms. We were trying to grow that, that we, we work closely with friends and uh, business people in France and we work with different stud farms and in Ireland and I, I hope that Yorton can become part and, uh, of a base where we might be able to work together with the two countries closely and develop the national hunt breeder. James and Gina are developed the whole of the farm and the stud farm, the actual stud, there's four acres of buildings and, and the stud farm stands on three of those acres and um, in the next two years all the stud farm will be completed. But there's new roofs going on, there's new windows, new doors, it will be, it, when we're finished it will look like a brand new farm. It was a real advantage to us to move to a clean field site, you know there's over 300 acres, we're looking at taking more land all the time, but it's a clean site. Obviously, if horses have been on land for a long time, it, land can get horse sick. I and mean, if it's not been looked after, whereas this land was, you know, it was, it was, most of it was looked after and it hadn't had any horses on, so it's clean land from disease or infection. So it's a very important uh, factor in, in the stud farm is the land, because without the land, you've got nothing really. You need to have good land. On the farm, continually, we would probably have in the region between 150 and 200. There would be about 80 mares that are either owned by the farm, um, partly owned by the farm with investors and boarding mares. And uh, it continually changes. More and more trainers and owners are actually coming to the farm and buying a foal or buying a two-year-old or a yearling. And um, it's something that we really want to take forward and put, push with. and, and get trainers coming straight to the farm and get owners coming down to the farm where they can see the, you know, see the horse, the young horse is loose jumped or the, maybe that the young horse is broken in and just sat on and, and they can see it being ridden and, and try and a, a different angle really at it, yeah. We, we had a tremendous uh, 2016 covering season. We put through an extra hundred mares through the stocks. We obviously introduced two new stallions, but Melinas went to stand over with our partners of Rough Barry in Ireland. So we just had a, we just juggled about a bit. Because I think it's good to keep your stallion pretty fresh because there's only a certain amount of mares in the UK. And if you constantly just have the same stallions, most people, if they want to use your stallion, they will have used it within two or three years. So you just need to, I'm not saying that you should sell that we don't sell the stallions, but we may place them in Ireland or back in France just for a year, just so we can move them out and give the British breed an opportunity to have a, you know, we, we stood Great Pretender for a year, he was well supported and I know if, if Pascal, we won't, but if Pascal was sending back again he would cover 200 mares this year, so we have to just keep moving stallions about to, you know, it, it sometimes suits a, a French stud to send a stallion over uh, for timing reasons and we could stand here at Yorton and vice versa, we may stand, send a stallion back out to France or over to Ireland. French mares come over and there's Irish mares come over. We, we covered, we're over 360 mares. It's nice to think that other countries think that we've got, you know, commercial, successful stallions, so that's, that's great.